Hey my friends, how are you doing? Today I'm going to do a comparison between Affinity Photo and the free Krita software in the question of which is better for digital painting and digital design. My name is Olivio, I'm a professional designer from Vienna, Austria and I want to thank all of my patrons who support me and make these videos possible. Thank you very much for that and let's get started. So. Some of you ask me which of these two tools is better for digital painting. Right away, when we go in Affinity Photo, which is on the screen right now, the first thing where you can see what a, a software is focused at is when you go to File and New File and to see what kind of options it gives you. So if you look at this menu, you see a lot of different options, but up here by type, you see how the developers prepared the software. So this is made for print, photo, web and for devices, which is like smartphones, tablets, all these kind of things. So this is more for photo editing and design. When we go over to Krita now and go to new file here like this, you can see the software already has a very different focus. You can make a custom document and create a, uh, a document from clipboard, but the other options are animation template, comic template, design template. There's a DSLR template and a texture template. So you can see most of these options are about creating either drawings or an animated film, like a 2D drawn animated film or comics. So it's more about digital art, it's more about drawing and a lot of the features in the software reflect that. So let's create a new file. Let's also do that over in Affinity Photo. Okay, what do we see next? The next important thing here is the layers, for example. So we can see down here on the right side, we have our choice of layers. So there um, we have pixel layers that we can create. And we also have mask layers, we have adjustment layers, we have effect layers, and we have live effect layers. O although these, um, sorry, are these one are not effect layers, they are layer effects. Sorry, I pronounced that the, uh, the wrong way. And we also have curve layers. For example, if I make a shape like this here, um, this will create a vector layer for me automatically um, like that. Okay, whoops. Okay, that shouldn't have happened. Let's snap this back over. All right. Let's go back over to Krita, uh, where we also have a choice of layers. So here we get, the first one is called a paint layer, which already tells you a lot about the focus of the software. The paint layer is actually a pixel layer, but it's called paint layer here. Then we have a group layer, which is actually a group, which is something also Affinity Photo can do, where you can group other layers in between. Then you have a clone layer, a vector layer, a filter layer, a fill layer, a file layer, I'm not sure what that is exactly. I haven't tried all of these functions yet, so I'm by far not an expert in this software. So I'm just showing you the differences I've seen so far working about 30 hours, 20 to 30 hours in Krita. Okay, um, then we have a transparency mask, a filter mask, a colorize mask, transform mask, and local selection. So you can see we have a lot of different options here. Um, the next thing that is interesting to separate, of course, are the brushes because we want to pay, uh, we want to paint with brushes. And here we see a very, very big difference between Affinity Photo and Krita. So when we go to our brush tool here on the left side, um, we of course get a brush. Let's select a basic brush. So here we have our basic brush. Let's make it a little bit bigger so you can see it better. And of course, I can draw on the background as I want to. One thing that is very different is even if I move this around, if you see on your screen, I hope you can see that you have this ring and you have the black point, which is where the color goes. And you can see that in the software, not from my tablet, but in the software, there is for some reason a huge delay. And this is not for stabilization because I turned stabilizer off. You can see here now it's on. It's, it's kind of different because I have this pink line and now the stabilizer is off, but still I have this huge delay between my mouse pointer and where the color is going. I don't know why that happens. Um, over in 
in Krita, we don't have that. The color is starting exactly where the mouse pointer is, as you can see here. There isn't really a delay between them, which is very nice because you want to see where your color is going. There is a delay when I look at the tablet because there is a delay between my stylus and the screen, but that is more based on the Huon device than on the software itself. Let's go back here. Okay, another thing that's important is, of course, for digital painting, um, is the settings you have for your brushes. And also there, we see a huge difference. So when we go here and we go up here to our More menu, we have some settings which are very nice. You can do a lot of interesting things with them. We also have these dynamics and you can see also here, there's a lot of choice uh, for size, accumulation, flow, rotation, scatter, hardness, all these kind of things. By the way, when you search my channel, I will also link that in the video description. I made a video especially explaining all these different settings for Affinity Photo. And you can set to um, what kind of source this change should have. So here, for example, is the pressure, the angle of my stylus, how I hold it, the tilt, the rotation, cycling, velocity, all these kind of things that you can set up um, for each of them. And also you have a curve over here that where you can also influence, for example, the pressure, how hard do I have to press to get a certain effect. So um, there's a certain amount of settings. You also can set up different textures, not just for the nozzle, which is the shape, the color comes out of the pen, but also the texture, which is um, a texture how the color is applied onto a kind of simulated canvas, uh, if you like. And you can also add sub brushes. So you have a brush that is built out of multiple brushes, which is very nice. Um, when we go over to Krita, you can see here that we have a really big um, list of settings that we can apply, which is really extreme i would say you can do a lot of different things here for example you have for um for the flow you can set the size the rotation the spacing the mirror the softness the sharpness um uh, this on top here was the ratio sorry i misread a rotation the scatter all these kind of things you can do the same thing uh for the color the source the painting texture all these kind of things you can see there's a lot of settings in here that you can use and um, of course, you can also set up um, different textures you want to use with your brush and all these kind of things. And um, maybe let's go over to an easier brush like this. Okay, cool. So um, here you can see you also have settings for the tip of um, the brush. And the cool thing here on the right side is you have a little test pad. So when you change settings, you can test it here and also delete that and test again until you are happy with the finished result. Um, so you can do a lot of things here. You also have um, like in Affinity Photo this uh, possibility to set uh, up a curve for the strength of the influencing value, like for example, the pressure or the velocity of the stroke or the um, angle in which you paint, stuff like that. And you can have predefined curves here. You can also set up the curves by hand and you have a lot of different um, uh, values that you can use here. A little bit more than in Affinity Photo. Uh, for example, you have stuff like distance or time or fuzzy stroke or X tilt and epsilon tilt. So different angles in which you tilt your stroke. Again, I can't really explain what all of them do. For example, fuzzy stroke, I'm not sure. Maybe that's a chitter. I haven't tried that yet, but it's impressive that it has these different functions. And another thing um, that stands out to me is the design of the interface when it comes to the brushes. And here it's done um, when you compare the look of it. So up here, the top bar, of course, Affinity Photo gives you the settings of opacity, flow of the size of the brush, of the hardness, all these kind of things. And also here on the side of the layers, it gives you a setting for opacity and stuff like that. But a big difference is here. The most important values like the opacity, the size and the blend modes 
are done in a way that is visually a bit more obvious because these bars here are very big and you can just tap on them very quickly as you can see to change the settings you don't have to go in a sub menu uh, over in affinity photo i would have to open this and then use this lever so it's not as quick and this can interrupt your workflow and also your kind of artistic flow when you're in the flow in the process you want to just work you want to quickly change settings it makes a big difference um, if it takes a bit to go this kind of extra step into a menu or if you can do it right away um, and there's also these other two settings where I can mirror my stroke and the nice thing here is I can also move around where it should mirror you can see here and I can move it over here and it does mirror over there and I can set this up uh, for two angles if I want to to create whatever I want and move it around to the position where I actually need that so these are very like thought through settings um, to use okay another difference that I want to show you is um, well let's go to this first this is also to do with brushes and this is this little circle that I have here so when I right click or when I set up a button on my stylus or on my tablet to go to this menu this ring pops up and the cool thing about the ring is I can set up here a lot of different brushes or tools that I want to use regularly I can do that just simply by assigning a tag to them and then choosing the tag to fill um, this with my favorite selection then we have this point here on the outside where I can quickly rotate the image and I can uh, snap back to the original position by just clicking on this point up here we can zoom down here I can mirror the image so which is very important when you design or draw something to see if the proportions are correct and also the composition is nice stuff like that you can simply snap back to 100% by clicking on this point here um, so there's a lot of uh, very nice and thoughtful um, ideas in here and as you can see here is the tab uh, the tag selection so when I click here I can switch for example to digital tools I can switch over to the ink tools I can switch over to the sketch tools and this is my personal selection here which I can also switch over to so that's very nice and in the middle as you can see you have this ring and you can see that I have a ring in the middle uh, sorry I have a triangle in the middle that gives me how bright it is and how dark it is um, and also how much color is in uh, my uh, and how bright how bright the color is sorry um and the cool thing is now when i draw something and then i bring this up again and make another selection and i draw something and make another selection and, and draw something these colors as you can see will be saved out here until um, a certain number i'm not sure right now what the number is i think maybe it's 10 different colors don't um, fix me on that uh, but it saves for you the last selected color so that is very nice and you can go back to them and often if you draw something if you paint something you limit yourself to a certain amount of color so not only the design fits well together but also the picture is not becoming extremely complicated and you rather work with blend modes and opacity and stuff like that uh, to create more colors um, uh, while you're painting so to to get them everything more natural so this is actually pretty good and you can, can paint a complete picture with just the colors you have selected through this um, or you can just make a layer where you draw a little bit so you can uh, just select the color later okay another thing and by the way I don't think affinity photo has this option I've never seen it of course you have stuff like you can up here uh, tap and then um, set up your color and all these kind of things and you have uh, you can also set up this color wheel and stuff like that um, and you have here your swatches uh, where it says the last reason colors and stuff like that um, but as you can see you also you always have to go into certain menus open them adjust something then swap over so there is some extra steps included that make it a little bit more complicated and break a little bit the flow that you want to keep going when you're drawing um, or painting okay 
And um, another thing that's important here is, uh, let's uh, switch this back, is the blend modes. And the blend modes are um, fairly important, fairly interesting for digital painting because you use a lot of these effects um, to, well, make different color effects in your paint, in your work. And um, if you go in here, you can see that you have a huge amount of blend mode. So this is just the categories, but you can go in here and then it gives you more blend modes, more settings for these blend modes. So that's really, you can see a long, long, long list of blend modes you can set up here. And this is for the brush, but this is also, you can set up uh, this for the layers. You can see this is really, you can go into insanely high detail of the settings you want to have and the way you want to work. So this is really um, very focused on professionally uh, creating digital paintings and stuff like that. So um, that is a very nice tool. While, of course, in Affinity Photo, when you go to the blend modes, for example, um, the blend modes for our brush, we have this as a choice. And this, of course, is focused on photo editing. And this is why it's called Affinity Photo, because it's for photo editing and these kind of design things, but not especially digital drawing. And which is very good because the software should be focused on what it wants to do and what it needs to do and not try to satisfy every customer. So, but I'm still doing this comparison because people ask me which kind of the software do I think is better uh, suited for digital painting. Um, okay, let's go over to Krita um, for another point that I want to show you. And um, that is when you draw something, um, let's, one second, let's make a bigger brush here like this. Okay, what I can do here, and this is uh, when you look here on the right side, I can lock my layer, but I can also lock my alpha and I can also lock my um, transparency. And locking the transparency is especially interesting because now if I draw on this with a different color, you can see that this is locked onto where I have already created pixels and also in the sense of the transparency. So let's draw something here uh, where it's a bit like, uh, uh, let's make the brush a little bit bigger like that. Okay, and now I lock this again. And when I now use a different color, you can see that this will stick. Is it not locked? Oh no, it is locked, okay. This will stick to the exact area where I've painted before, even in the transparent area. So that is very nice. You can really, and this is kind of a technique you use um, for uh, the drawing for the painting is um, that you mask or like fill with color a certain area and then you paint on that. So you don't have to really think about the limitations of your brush. I can show you, I made a little exercise here, a drawing, where is it? Okay, it's not here. Um, I made a little exercise drawing of a leaf. Let's open this up real quick. Sorry, there we go. This, I made this yesterday from a live leaf that I found on the uh, road. I brought it home, I started to draw it and now I have to fill it with color. And you can see that I, um, I filled this inner part of the leaf with color. And so now I can simply lock the transparency and I can paint on that. And I don't really have to uh, look out for uh, the borders of my brush. I can simply use the brush in any way I want. And it will always be limited to these sides um, where my, uh, where my, my, uh, mask is. So that is very nice, as you can see, and makes the process very quick. And um, of course, you can mask things in, um, in Affinity Photo, but again, it is a little bit of an extra step. Um, if I go here and brush something, I can create a mask from that if I want to, but I have to create um, I or I have to create a selection from that and then I can paint on the selection, but I have these little ant lines around it, uh, which are a bit confusing for the eye in the process of painting. So it's not just one click, you have to go through several steps to set that up. Um, but again, Affinity Photo is not really made for digital painting. You can do it, of course, and uh, for the start, it might be a good experience, but 
I mean, Krita is completely for free, so why not go with that? Um, for your digital painting needs because it has so much more features. Oh, uh, there's another thing, by the way, I want to show you that's really cool. Um, that is also um, uh, focused onto digital painting. Let's make a new file here. Um, and then when you want to edit it more with all these kind of effects and stuff, because if, for example, if you look here for the filters, uh, there's not really much choice here and they don't really work as well um, as in Affinity Photo. So I think for creating a digital painting, um, I would use Krita and then for the post-processing of applying effects and maybe mixing it with a photo or putting it into a design or stuff like that, I would switch over to either Affinity Photo or Affinity Designer to finish it up and give it kind of this more finished professional look and, and then uh, bring it out there. So um, here's the basically the last thing I want to show uh, for this video. There's a ton of more features. I, I can't cover them all. It would be too confusing, but there's just the main differences I want to point out today. And this is this guiding tool here. And the guiding tool is really cool because here on the right side, you have a different selection of options. So for example, you can set up uh, infinite rulers that help you make straight lines. You can also set up perspective grids and you can also set up vanishing points. Let's do this real quick. So I click here once and you can see there's automatically a vanishing point and now I can click again and I have a second vanishing point and this gives me these lines here to um, to draw on. But the cool thing is now when I use my um, when I use my brush, you can see lines that go to the vanishing point are always following my brush. So I can always see where the line has to go and I can even set it up so it says snap to assistance so that my brush is actually following this line. This doesn't work 100% perfect, not because it works bad, but I will show you um, because it's, it often has kind of a hard time to decide in which direction I want to go. Uh, sometimes as you can see here, it kind of is undecided. It goes into the wrong correct and in the wrong direction. So that is not maybe the best um, tool to have, but um, still just the visual aid is very nice. And um, let's go back to setting this up. Let's delete these two and go over to perspective. And perspective is also very cool. So you can set two points, three points. And with the fourth point, you can see that a grid is coming up. And when you have, for example, a photo as a basis, you can select uh, points on the photo to create a, 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 a realistic exact perspective. And of course, you can create as many of these grids as, as you want to have in your picture in any kind of orientation as you want. You can also move them around stuff like that. So that is very, very useful um, to have to have a support for your drawing uh, to get it right in the perspective. Also to put something into place based on another design you have already created of maybe a landscape or of a photo where you want to draw a character into in the right perspective. All these kind of things can help you there very nice. You can see this is really, really focused on creating tools for you that are made especially for digital painting, digital drawing of animation, of comics, of all these kind of nice things, um, concept art, all this kind of stuff. Uh, so, and it's completely free. So that is a good choice to have and also a good alternative to have to Affinity Photo. And Affinity Photo is still very valuable, especially for the finishing touches, for making looking more professional and having all these cool filters in here um, that you can use to do that. So um, that is also very nice to have. Okay, so that was my comparison. And of course, I would clearly say Krita is better suited for digital painting, but Affinity Photo still has some basic tools in there that are very nice. And it has, of course, its use, especially for photo editing, but also for finishing touches and for creating a nice design um, with it. Okay, thank you very much for watching and see you in the next episode. Bye.